Okay. So now we will learn the operational deviations in an airline or operational deviations as part of the airline industry. Now, airline schedules may change, and this will lead to overall operational de deviation. So just before this, we learned about what is airline schedule and how airline scheduling is done and how it is done based on the market demand and so on. So airline schedules may change. They can be airline devi schedule deviations, and this will lead to overall operational deviation. That means airline scheduling has a direct impact on the operational on the op on the airline airlines operations airline schedule deviation will certainly have an impact on operational deviation i'm repeating this listen to me carefully see you have prepared airline schedule for example airline schedule is prepared so now if there are changes in the schedule that means certainly there will be changes in the operation. So there is a direct nexus there, a direct relationship. If schedule is changed, operations change, right? In case of, uh, you see, um, there is a problem with the weather. So flight flights are delayed. So again, the schedule is changed. So naturally, operation of that flight will change. That means the flight will take off only after, say, Whatever delay is there, say one hour, two hours, say it was scheduled at 9.30 a.m. Now it's going to take off at 11 a.m. So that means the operations will begin at 11 a.m. So for that operations, again, there are a number of factors which are involved. So they will have to work towards, you know, setting right all those other operational factors which are involved. And they're going to set it right based upon the new schedule that they have now strategically devised because of a particular impediment or particular problem that has occurred, something that probably they had foreseen or it has been, it, it is unforeseen. But, you know, uh, uh, impediments in, um, you know, airlines operation is but inevitable. It happens, so thereby they prepare a contingency plan and they are ready in advance. So airline schedules, therefore, may change and this will lead to overall operational deviation. Operational deviation involves a series of subsequent changes uh, that need to implement in the entire process and flights need to be rescheduled. At times, rerouting may be required and that would lead to irregular operations that need to be ironed out. So such deviations are handled by the nerve center, that is the airline operational control department. Now, the AOCC, that is the Airlines Operation Control Center, has several methods to counter flight time deviations. To resolve the issue, they may reduce the actual aircraft turn time, you see, adjust the flight speed, cancel one flight or more, change crew if need be, or absorb scheduled slack. Now, how sometimes they would adjust the flight speed? Not just by racing, but also sometimes by flying at the higher altitude so the higher the altitude the swifter will be the speed and you know you would reach the your destination faster right so therefore they would plan probably to fly at a higher altitude just to uh you know counter flight time deviations or to resolve the timing there the the, the, the timing issue there so to achieve the desired on-time result, the flight schedules may again sometimes add a buffer, like a buffering time. Weather conditions are one of the prominent reasons for delays in flight operations, and they contribute to operational deviations. Now, apart from the weather conditions, airlines' ground support services, such as baggage handling, equipment breakdowns, passenger handling, etc., can also pose a cause of poor operational deviation. I'm sure you would agree with me on this. The ground support services, remember, when you have baggage handling issues, equipments may break down, passenger handling issues, so all these also can cause operational deviation. Gate scheduling is yet another factor that may contribute to operational deviation. Like since gate sizes vary, and likewise, the facilities at each gate will vary. Not all gates are designed for every type of aircraft. 
In case there is a jumbo aircraft that needs a considerable gate size after it has landed and assuming there is not an empty gate available, so again, this would lead to delay in passenger disembarking and subsequent delay in all other attached formalities, right? So gate scheduling, therefore, is again another significant factor that can contribute towards operational deviations or, you know, changes in the normal operational factors or normal operations of the airline for a particular flight. Airport congestion, again, may also cause operational deviation as well. That means there are several flights coming at, you know, at the same time. So airport congestion. So taxi time, which means the time between aircraft, uh, where the taxi pulls off, that is the aircraft pulls off from the gate to the takeoff. So that's taxi time. So if the aircraft does not receive the appropriate signal to take off, then the taxi time may be extended again, which would lead to operational deviation. Lack of coordination within the internal departments. That means coordination within the internal departments. Proper coordination is preemptory for the purpose of smooth operations of airlines. That means this factor, if there is lack of coordination within the internal departments and within the airport control units, that would lead to operational deviations. And we do not want operational deviations. The main aim is to cut out as much as possible operational deviations, strategically cut it off. So that means you must learn here that coordination within the internal departments has to be effective. So effective coordination within the internal departments would prohibit operations deviation. But lack of coordination within the internal departments and within the airport control units would lead to operational deviations. So what is the solution? Obviously, they would reschedule the flights and there can be even rerouting can be done to sort out the problem that can cause the deviation in the smooth operations. So this is all about operation deviation. This has been a small chapter. And in this chapter, again, I'm trying to recapitulate and tell you now that airline scheduling has got a direct bearing upon the op airline operations. I'm repeating, airline scheduling has got a direct bearing upon operations or airline operations. In case of scheduled deviation, it would have a direct impact on the operations and thereby cause operational deviations. Operation deviation involves a subsequent change, number of sub subsequent changes because if flights uh, scheduling is, uh, you know, um, there is changes in the flight schedule. That means even there'll be changes in the operation, the operations in the airline operations in case, uh, you know, due to weather, I'm repeating, there is a flight delay. Again, the operations, again, uh, there would be delay in the flight operations in the flight takeoff and landing at one particular, whatever particular destination. Next is, again, airline operation control center. They have you know, several methods to uh, counter flight time deviations. What causes these operational deviations is, of course, the weather conditions can, uh, you know, uh, be, uh, you know, can hinder operations or smooth, effective operations of airlines, weather conditions, then gate scheduling or even airport congestion, taxi time and lack of coordination within the internal departments. See, here, uh, you know, um, weather conditions, of course, is not in your hands. Sometimes gate scheduling, sometimes, you know, it might be difficult because of air condition possibly. And uh, again, the you know, the aircraft may not get proper signals. So again, taxi time delays may be there, but certainly coordination within the internal departments is in the hands of the airline's personnel, how effectively you coordinate with the department. This, this is something that you can really take care of if you're working for the airline industry, that there should be proper coordination within the internal departments. So again, when there is operational deviation, the solution is of course, rescheduling of flights and sometimes even rerouting. So this is it with airline deviations. Let me know if you have any questions on airline scheduling and airline operation deviation. So next class, we are going to learn about 
chapter eight and chapter nine that basically talks about the challenges in the airline industry and the future of the airline industry. And with that, we will complete the syllabus for this course. Let me know if you have any questions.